through Jews is kind of like the gospel that yeah. so so knowledge that black people are the true Jews is kind of like the gospel that leads to salvation. Yes. <laughs> Do you have to have I, I like that though. Are we opposed to what he's saying there? Well, the good news, when does it say the good tidings is to Zion? Well, how does Zion get the good news if Zion doesn't know who Zion is? That is Isaiah 61. Was that Jesus is black? Because I'm sure they probably uh Oh, have here to... we go. Yes. Do you have to have the knowledge that Jesus is black? Because I'm sure they probably have to run to you. My favorite verse when I was in critical race theory and social justice <laughs> is from Revelation. Like, you see his bronze feet? You see that woolly hair? This mess is woolly. Okay? I'm related to Jesus, and of course, Jesus is black. Yeah, it's the good times theology for me. I hate it so much. Now, I haven't heard them. Damn. What a word. Wow. Dude. What a she word. She hates it. She hates it. That uh, with the broadcast. Hey, Shalom. Welcome to Off Code, the show where we ignore the cultural codes and have real and intriguing conversations regarding the black community and ways. Regarding the black community. So this is some. Um, this is a rather new channel, I think, that we're going to be going on, but this is a rather new title. Okay. So let's 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 play this, y'all. Let's play this. Let's get into this. Completely outraged at the idea that we are God's chosen people. Completely outraged that the Messiah is a man of color. Completely outraged that we say those white people are fra fake frauds and part-time broads. This this is what you're gonna hear throughout the duration of this sickening sickening white supremacist cult known as Christianity. You're going to hear self-hatred. You're going to hear a lot of cooning. You're going to hear stock syndrome, Willie Lynch syndrome. You're going to hear replacement theology and anti-Semitism. You're going to hear antinomianism. This is what you're going to hear with this white supremacist cult known as Christianity. So let's take a listen. Oh, that's awesome. Again, Miss Titus, the one in the middle, we're familiar with her through vocab alone. Me and her had a back and forth. I did a video on her. She was like, oh, I'm so honored. He did a video on me. Wow. Look at how many views it's got. And then she blocked me. <laughs> this was some years ago. That whole Shield Squad vocab alone put together a team of apologists called the Shield Squad. And through the spirit of God, we dismantled that group. What was that? 2016, 17, probably. Some of 18. And uh, we dismantled that whole group, made them turn on each other. Oh, Sakari War is a different type of warfare. We was getting dirt, bringing family into it, making them turn on each other, going in on them. Most High broke that thing up, right? Vocab, where's the shield squad at? Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, let's go. Oh, tell us who are the black Hebrew Israelites? Like, is it something that it one thing I never one thing I can never respect is, are these channels and podcasts and platforms that won't just bring an Israelite on there and interview the Israelite. You're you're interviewing somebody who looks into the Israelites, but is not a believer and practitioner. So already it's a misrepresentation. Out the gate. Is 
just, you know, new and growing? Or is it something that's been around a long time? Like, who are these people? It's actually pretty old. Well, it's not that old, but it's older than a lot of us probably think. I think it goes back maybe about 100 years, but it got really popular, I think, because of social media and all the things that have been going on over the last few years with, like, you know, racism and just the climate of, of the United States and all this kind of stuff. And with YouTube, you know, everybody can get on YouTube and have a platform. So it kind of went from the cities to a lot of, you know, southern places and has crept its way into the black church. But basically, black Hebrew Israelites are people who read the Bible and they use Deuteronomy 28 to affirm this idea, this concept that all descendants of the transatlantic slave trade are the true Jews. And so the people who are living in Israel now are fake Jews who have been, they're basically imposters. They stole our identity. When you when you listen to this, all you can think of is lost soul. Lost soul. Anybody in 2024, those people in the land over there even say that they're not the original people of the land. Hell, doctor, see, and this is what this is from two weeks ago. And I'm sure she's seen the debate last year with Dr. Michael Brown in Guerrilla Hebrew. Dr. Michael Brown being an Ashkenazi Jew who they would esteem as the world's foremost messianic apologist, PhD scholar. I'm sure she's seen that debate in which he said the Igbo are Israelites, the Limba are Israelites, and he said, who else? A large portion of Latinos are Israelites. So the, the same guy that they're champion affirms a large portion of us, at least, as Israelites, the so-called Negro and Latino, right? And said that they didn't turn white until 1000 AD, which was complete BS. But when we say it, oh, these guys, are they, they don't know what they're talking about. They're lying. And we don't just use Deuteronomy 28, even though that fits us more than it fits them. It doesn't fit them at all. The really Hebrew acts, Dr. M Michael Brown, to show which curse applies to them today, because it said the curses will be upon the Israelites forever until the Messiah liberates them. He couldn't name one. Go watch it. This is the same sister that said, Deuteronomy 28 is in prophecy. <sighs> Moses was writing that, according to the Christian timeline, Moses was writing that 1500 BC. Christians will say most of it was fulfilled in ancient Babylon. That's five, that's 600 BC. So that's a thousand years later. How's that not prophecy? <clears throat> we got more than just Deuteronomy 28. We have Ezekiel 4. We have Jeremiah 30. We have um, Genesis 49, Deuteronomy 33. We have uh, the book, the whole book of Jeremiah, when it talks about this modern day Babylon, mystery Babylon, daughter of Babylon, or land of the north. We have the color of the people of the Bible, the Israelites within the Bible. We have even the Talmud saying there wasn't one white Jew in the first century. We have even the Midrash saying that the people of Shem are a melanated people. We have extra biblical sources, the Africans who wrote the Bible. We have some... Because some brothers use, and I do, I do too as well. Babylon the Timbuktu. We have cartography. What is that? Ancient maps that say in parts of Africa, land of the Negroes, land of the Black Jews, Negro land. We have archaeology. We have some oral tradition. 
it's it's much more than just a single chapter in the whole Bible. And this is the gaslighting that these evil Christians do. I'm going to be nice today. These evil Christians will try to act like we're substantiating this major claim with one chapter. We have PhD scholars from both sides that say there is merit and evidence of what they're saying. I have a whole list of prestigious individuals in the Jewish community that say a large portion of us are Israelites. We don't need them, but if you hear the white man say it, you're going to say, yeah. Oh, he believed. Yeah, now you believe it. We have the Jews being called the N-word, nigga, in the Bible. So with this exceeding great amount of evidence, we come to this conclusion. And it will now be stopped. And you could say it's 100 years ago, but it's 3,500 years ago. Almost 4,000 when the Lord chose our forefather, Abraham, and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldees. So it's longer than 100 years ago. And people over here in the Americas knew they were Israelites, especially the indigenous people of the Americas. There's proof on that. There's archaeology on that. So with the information and facts laid out and you guys turning a blind eye or um, trying to minimize, minimize um, the evidence, minimize the information, it's not working. It's not working. Uh, the water Yasharala for the super chat donation, greatly appreciate you. Somebody says she's getting paid. They may, they may have paid her for an interview, but not nothing, probably $50. Because to be honest with you, with how ignorant she is, nobody would pay her $20 for a blow job. Let's go. And the reason they know that we are the true Jews is because of the curses in Deuteronomy 28. So Hebrew Israelism, I think if you had asked maybe four or five years ago, what do they believe? It would have been a little bit easier, but now it just seems like there's so many different offshoots and just different groups. So talking to one Hebrew Israelite really is just like talking to one Hebrew Israelite because they, there's, <laughs> it's basically like whatever floats your boat. You know, some people, they can claim to be Israelite, but then you talk to them, it's like, that's kind of more of like a nation of Islam type of thing, or that's more of an African spirituality type of thing. So it, it can be all over the place, but. You hear this slander? That is just so slanderous. Oh, every Israelite believes something different. That's really Christianity with their 10,000 denominations. Nationally, they believe that they are the true Jews, and most of them, I would say, affirm this idea of law keeping. Affirm the idea of law keeping. Do you guys hear that? They they say you have to keep God's laws. That's evil. Wow. That's a cult. That's so demonic. Uh-uh, get away. They're telling you to keep God's laws. Run away from them. This, this can't be real. Christianity is, is, is just mind-boggling. It, it really is. I am taken aback and aback and aback and aback and aback that we get demonized for saying, keep God's laws, everybody. Yesterday, we did the video on that Christian witch. This one here is a Christian that rhymes with witch, but we're not going to say that. There was a Christian witch, and there's this Christian, you know, it rhymes with witch, but. Look at this Matthew 7 and 23. In the NLT, right? Matthew 7 and 23 in the NLT. It says, but I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. 
you who break God's laws. So it can make him make the Messiah say, depart from me. I never knew you. Then what can keeping God's laws do for you? See, I ask Christians all this all the time. Can bad works prevent you from getting the kingdom? They'll say yes. If they're smart, they'll say yes. Some will say, no, I can do everything I want and I still get the kingdom. That's not biblical. That's Christianity. <laughs> we have to separate the Bible from Christianity. I was just telling this sister this yesterday. You have to just separate, separate the Bible from Christianity and read it. And then you will un truly understand. One is man-made, one is God-made, right? So if bad works can prevent us from getting the kingdom, that means good works can propel us into the kingdom. That's just logic. That's just good logic, right? Let's keep going. So she said, and, and most of them affirm that you have to keep God's law. We gonna have to get into that. Yeah, so so crazy, crazy. Okay, I got you. <laughs> Wait, they said you have to keep God's laws. Crazy, crazy. Wow, we're gonna have to get into that. This is what we're doing here. <laughs> I got you. That's basically what we're saying. Oh my God, this is this is absolutely horrible, man. This is horrible. Look at their faces. Look at their faces. Yes, they tell you to keep God's laws. And they're just like, whoa, crazy. These guys are nuts. Oh, man. This is why we say Christianity is that teaches antinomianism. Antinomianism. Antinomianism is any of you which reject laws or legalism and argues against more religious or social norms, right? So you'll see that in Christianity. They're the real heretics. Yes. So wait, now, does that mean that they saying that all the Jews, like going back into, you know, pre Deuteronomy 28, um, like that the, those Hebrews were also of African descent because like oh man um, see that's the problem you're thinking we are Hamites Jews come from Shem Shem, Ham, and Japheth. That's who repopulated the world. We're not saying Shemites are from Hamite descent. That's what you that's what you're saying when you say stupid statements like this. Because you because you're 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 assuming that we are of Hamitic descent. Just because we resided in Africa, the continent of Africa does not mean that, that we are of Hamitic descent. You won't find that word Africa in the Bible. So you're, you're thinking continentally. You're saying, oh, they're a descendant, descendants of a continent when you say stupid stuff like that. Africa is a continent. See if it's here. It says on the way. So just keep looking up. Uh, yeah, Hassad, Hassad, if you're watching, Hassad, if you are watching Officer Hassad, just make yourself known in the chat and you can join the panel. All right. You can join the panel. Just ridiculous. Straight up ridiculous, man. So are they saying the Jews are, are, are pre-Deuteronomy were of African descent? 
There was no Africa back then. That's the problem. You Christians are stupid with all disrespect. Are they saying that only African Americans then, because of the transatlantic slave trade, or those in the African diaspora are Jews, but then nobody else is a Jew, everybody else is a fake Jew? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, most of them believe that if you're a descendant of the transla transatlantic slave trade, so basically everyone who was a part of that the diaspora. So they, they've got the 12 tribes chart. A lot of them say that Americans, so Black Americans would be the tribe of Judah. In Haiti, you would have the Levites, and there's there's different ones. Like they've also kind of um, included Native Americans and Hispanic on the. We didn't kind of include anything. It's included. I'm on the chart too. So, yeah, it just <laughs> basically if you black and you came over here on the ship, and I think they'll even say that if you black and you came over here on the ship, then you would do. So the the Haitians. Not just that, some of us have been left in West Africa and they are keeping some of the customs and culture and know our identity before it had to be retaught to them. The Levites, yes. Hey, I'm a Levitical priest. <laughs> okay. okay, I see you Hebrew. <laughs> yeah. You would be a, the undesirable priestess oh my goodness there is so much glaringly wrong with that type of thinking from a historical and geo you can tell his woman it's here jeremiah you didn't hear them get out the car oh you can tell that he he's he's a he's a uh a incel a insult or unsub his woman is ruling over him easily. Cool approach, but um, why is why is this so appealing? Why do you believe this is so appealing to, let's say, the black community? And why is it no gotten like you say gotten so popular? Why is it taking? Why is it stealing members from the black church? That's what he's asking. Why are millennials millennials involved? Why are they stealing from the black church membership? Um, why do all the celebrities want to identify with it? Why do the, 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 the streets want to identify with it? Why do all the influencers want to identify Why do people who matter want to identify with it? That's the question. Recently, the last, let's say, 15, 20 years, why is it gaining so much steam? Why, you, why do you believe it's so popular within the Black community? I think it's a product of identity crisis, for one, you know, if someone is telling you this book is all about you, then it makes you feel like, oh, I am special. All these things I went through in my life is because mm -hmm. I am the special chosen one of God. How many of you guys gave a goddamn about your ethnicity at the point you were? Not many of us. I didn't give a, I didn't care. Where do we come from? Who are we? I didn't give a damn about no identity. I accepted this because it's the full truth. It's not just our identity. It's who, what the white man's identity, who the other nation's identity are. The prophecies. Why is not, not only, why did we go through this? Why is the world going through what it's going through? What's going to happen at the end of the world? What do we need to do to avoid that judgment day? I think it kind of gives you an ego boost but i think also like because there's a lot of men who are drawn to it women are definitely you know interested in the theology too but i think it's especially attractive to young black men because you have you know a tribe you know a collective group of young people who you can connect with and you know tell you this about yourself tell you that about yourself make you feel good about yourself and i think it's like an empowerment thing and probably also because Sadly, you know, a lot of us grew up in churches and I've, I've grown up in some really, really good churches. But I've also been in some kind of wonky churches, too. I think a lot of people are wonky churches and not really getting a whole lot of, you know, really sound Bible teaching.
Yeah. And so it just because it becomes goofy. Like when you realize health and wealth and prosperity doesn't quite work, name that claim it doesn't work. You're like, I'm done with this. And then this whole idea of Christianity being the white man's religion, I think that she knows exactly why everybody's leaving the church and that this is the truth. She just said it. Church is corny. They're not teaching. There's one verse, maybe, per sermon. Right? She knows that. And then the truth coming out about it being a white man's religion. It is. Now, they might say, but there was some black church fathers. So what? There's some black theologians. But the, the dominant ethnic group of Christianity for the last two epochs have been Gentile Caucasians. Period. The seminary, cemetery schools that you guys go to today, all that's on the walls are white theologians and dot with and doctors who you have to teach that doctrine, that code, that format, that rhetoric, that dogma. Push people into Hebrew Israelism. And it's almost like Nation of Islam is kind of like a precursor because I feel like they kind of borrow from each yeah. other a lot. But if I had to guess, I think. What do we borrow from the NOI? Besides the white man is the devil, which that's in the Bible. What do we borrow from them? Doctrinally. Now, we're militant like them. We do have order like them. We are for our people in our community like them. But doctrinally, what do we borrow? Doctrinally. Why a lot of people become Hebrew Israelites, but I'm sure there's a lot of different reasons. I agree with that. I mean, that's kind of been my observation is it is an identity crisis, you know? Um, a lot of black Americans, we don't know who we are, right? When you, when you lose your history, when you lose your culture, um, and you have this. Okay, brother, look, I'm coming to you saying, who are we? And you're going to say, it doesn't matter. You're in Christ now. <laughs> so there's still a void that's never going to be filled with the stupid Christians. There's nothing you can do for the young generation who would want to know who we are, why we, where we come from, and why this happened to us. You got no answers. Of inferiority complex. You're looking for something. It started back in the day to tell us we were all kings and queens, right? It's, it's always, we're always trying to boost ourselves up of our history. And when you don't really have one, you get to make it up, right? And so anything that comes along that tells you you're special, that tells you you're great, that tells you you are all kings and queens or tell you that you're actually God's chosen people, uh, people, some people gravitate to that because it now it gives them a sense of identity. They no longer feel less than white people. And now all of a sudden they feel superior to white people. And we can get into that and, and how, the, how that comes off. But no, I, I mean, we can close the Bible and there's white biologists and scientists that say, you know, genetically and biologically, we are superior than them. I mean, that's just a fact. Exactly right. It is truly an identity crisis of not knowing who we are. Ty, I think it's interesting that you... Debak, there you go. So we're just slaves then, is what you're saying. Just shut up. You're the son of a slave. You're never going to be nothing. You never were nothing. Just shut up and serve this Ashkenazi Jewish Jesus. This is what Christianity has to offer for our people. That's it. Shut up and serve this white Jesus. Don't worry about who the hell you were. And that it, it's really attractive to men. Not that women don't join, but that it's really attractive to men. And you know, one of the things that I tend to see in not all, but a lot of black churches is that it they tend to be very woman heavy or woman run, or you know, even if there is a male senior pastor, there's a lot of female leadership in the in the church and a Exactly. The church is ran by white people because it's a white supremacist cult and 
now the sub the subdivisions of the Christianity, the black churches are ran by women. There's no masculine men in that in the black church. The men in there are feminine and homosexuals. That's not even a joke. Let's get his side on here for a second. Because I know his side. And we could get some Christians on here too. If there's any Christians in the chat who who wants to land back on what they've been saying. Link in the chat for some intelli intelligible Christians and Officer Hassad, right? Very heavy female presence and voice. And I wonder if that, like that very large female presence can be off-putting to men or make them feel as if they don't actually have a place for leadership and so then something like the black hebrew israelites is attractive because now you have this place where you can really be a man you can be in wait you guys want to run to paul all the time you're god paul said women need to shut up in the church and not teach so y'all want to run to paul and all of that let's run to paul then uh, Abby, the water for becoming a Sakari flexor and joining the channel. All praises to the most high. Hey, Sean, what's going on, man? What's going on, man? Talk to me, man. It, you know, it's just crazy. Like, you, you made a statement earlier. And, um, you know, first, of course, all praise to the most high. Um, who are we then? Because, you know, we, we never have heard a Christian do is, OK, these guys say that they're Israelites. Here's who they actually are in the Bible. If you guys do that, then, oh, I guess we're not Israelites anymore. And then when we ask the question, oh, who are we? Well, it doesn't matter who you are. <laughs> but you don't tell any other race of people that, that it doesn't matter who they are. But it doesn't matter who, who we are. Just tell us who we are and show us. But then they said, Deacon, uh, well, it's because of a, an identity crisis. Like we just make things up. Like all of us in the in you know in the in the truth, especially those who have been in this for a minute, to hear that is so crazy because they just disregard the the archaeology, the history. We read about in Isaiah chapter three that there would be a people whose uh, whose whose women would their, their men would die in the streets, that God would smite them with baldness. We read about in Isaiah forty two and twenty two that there would be a people who would be robbed and spoiled. Or it says in the NLT, robbed and plundered, enslaved and imprisoned. We have the highest incarceration rate. We were enslaved. It says that they would be taken for a prey and none would restore, meaning no one would help them or bring them back home. And we're crazy for just, huh, that sounds like us. Unbelievable these people are, man. I don't want to go on a rant, though. But Well, well let's, let's keep going. It's like 50 minutes or we ain't going to do the whole thing, Lord willing. Where's the good part? Attractive to men. Oh, they're going to talk about the apocrypha in a second. Chef, there's there's almost like an, an, an identity for yeah. the man in that. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even think about it like that. But yeah, especially if you have like more of a charismatic type of background where it's very emotion led, you know, the crying and the dancing and all this. Not that there's anything wrong with that per se. But I know all men don't want, they don't want to cry. Like, I don't, I'm not here, I didn't come here to cry. I came to like, teach me something. And I think if you're lacking that intellectual side of Christianity and, and Bible knowledge and all that kind of stuff, like the God. Basically, she just said, niggas is in church crying. <laughs> the niggas is in church crying and dancing. I am delivered. I don't like men's no more. <laughs> I like women. Women, that's the type of stuff they're doing in the church, man. <laughs> wait, 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 Montez, stay tuned. Without the gospel, it's just so cheap. It, it, there's, it's just not going to keep you very long. Uh -huh. I've seen some of like, the literature. It's, it comes off as very masculine and strong. Oh, my God. This bitch-ass nigga right here, man. It's hard. To, it's going to be hard to respect him as my brother because now he's got something. To, it, now it's our literature is very masculine and strong. And so now he wants he, he, he 
he has a problem with our literature being masculine and strong. We need to dumb it down. We need some more estrogen in our literature. <laughs> it's too much testosterone. Right. In our yeah. literature. Yeah. Tone it down. Deflate some of that air out of your chest. That's what he wants us to do. And so you you got these young impressionable men who don't know how to be men, and now someone is telling them that that this is this is who you are, and this is who you need to be, and this is something to kind of mimic and aspire to is is strength. And we're gonna get. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the question about the memes, but if you see the memes. It's all like these really jack strong, powerful black men. Oh my God, I can't stand it. <laughs> men. <laughs> oh my God, bro. I don't make fun of it too much. I just, because you already know what they're going to do, Deacon. They're going to see, they're, they're just making fun of us. It, it's hard not to, you know, but it's like, my bad. Nah, man. Go ahead, brother. Go no, ahead. I just, I, just, I, I want to hear a little bit more. So, like, yeah, my bad. I'm just like, the scriptures say, gird up thy loins like a man. The Bible says he's calling us to be mighty men. He even says, you are going to be my battle axe and weapons of war. He says that the woman is the weaker vessel. Therefore, we should not be effeminate and soft like women. He has a problem with that. There is an order. The father, the son, the man, the woman, the child. Ain't that in Paul's writings as well? Huh? Yeah, the Christian. And it just appeals to men as something to ascribe to and be this is who you are. You are a king. You are a warrior. You are the lion of Judah, right? And so um, that imagery is very, very powerful for men who come out of very matriarchal kind of culture. Yeah, and I'm I'm sure, you know, the six that believe in polygamy also are like, oh, I can have more than one. Yes. Life. Also, yes. <laughs> you know. <laughs> There's so many things. So so digging Christian Christians are supposed to teach us how to be men. <laughs> every deadbeat father I've ever known was a Christian. Every murderer, every dope boy, every whore, every pimp, every, all that was Christians. <laughs> But they're going to teach us how to be men. <laughs> there was something else that he just said. I'm trying to remember what he just said. Um, it's all right. It'll come back to me. Somebody said him downstairs. Estrogenic and moist. Pause. <laughs> no, that is Diddy. No Diddy. We don't have to say no Diddy. That is Diddy. What he's doing. Uh, you mentioned that they bring a lot of the... Deuteronomy 28, the cursing passages and all of that. Is the Bible their only text? Like like canonical text or? No, 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 no. I, I wish, <laughs> but they love the Apocrypha. I haven't read much of the Apocrypha myself, but from what I've heard, there are some passages in some of those Deuteronomy, how do you even say it? Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy and canonical <laughs> mm. <laughs> that they like because it seems to affirm um, some of these ideas of like, I don't know, I guess Jews being more important than other people or something like that. I'm, I hope I'm not butchering the apocryphal. Oh my God, bro. First of all, she said we go to the apocrypha because it affirms that the Jews are better than other people. The New Testament affirms that. Jesus Christ himself affirms that. I only come to you, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He calls us the children of the kingdom. Paul says, what advantage had the Jew much in every way? Then Paul says that even if they don't, if they're enemies of the gospel, they're still of the election, meaning they're still the chosen people of God. Romans 11 and 28 to 29. Romans 9 and 4 says everything is, belongs to them, the promises, the covenants. The author of Hebrews says the new covenant is for them. James letters. James only wrote his letter to them. Peter only wrote wrote his letter to them and said that you're a chosen race. <laughs> Peter said that they're a chosen race. Race. Somebody said you are a butcher and chick. Just shut up. <laughs> well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a sister. When when we, we're gonna start getting sisters to come on here, 
and destroy these Christian women. Because me, I'm not trying to get, this is going to turn domestic. That's why I'll be having to just dumb it down. This will turn domestic verbally because she doesn't know the Bible. So just destroying her and smashing her with the Bible, that's overkill, right? But let's see what she says about the Apocrypha. But but there's something in that Apocrypha that affirms this Hebrew Israelite doctrine. So I think that's one reason why they... That's why we use it, because it affirms our doctrine. No, we use it because your Lord and Savior used it when he celebrated the Feast of Dedication, which is Hanukkah. We use it because it's a part of our history, and it's been a part of the canon until this white homosexual named Martin Luther had a problem. Then his students came after him and tried to separate it and put it in between the Old Testament and New Testament as uh, deuterocanonical. That's how you say it, deuterocanonical. You were struggling to say that word. Anything, Hassad? Yeah, and then even in Matthew 21 and 43, we see the parallel with that in 2nd Esther 1 and 30, when it says, how I would have gathered you as hens gather her chicks, mm -hmm. essentially quoting 2nd Esther chapter 1, verse 30. Mm -hmm. And one more thing, too, Deacon, mm -hmm. um, because they, the guy, I think when you were gone, he said, like, these guys are trying to say, you know, they're trying to get empowered and say that, you know, they're the, the lions from the tribe of Judah and just... They're saying how crazy that is for black people to do that, right? <laughs> do that. We shouldn't want to be in power. Go ahead. But but the uh, Ashkenazim, they get to do that. There's no issue when they get to do that, right? When they get to go into the Bible and then they read Deuteronomy 28, and maybe some of them might come to the conclusion that they come to as to why their people are suffering or why what's going on over there in the Middle East right now is going on. And they get to point to Deuteronomy 28. There's no, there's no, there's no blinking of an eye then. There's no calling into question their authenticity as to whether or not they are the people of God. But when black and Hispanic people do it, now there's a problem with us. There's a problem with us empowering ourselves. No, I always say that. The Ethiopians can be Christians and keep their flag language and heritage and culture and food. The Filipinos can be Christians and keep their flag language, heritage, culture, have racial empowerment and uh, ethnic pride. Every other ethnicity can do it except for the black man because they, the white man has taught us with plantation Christianity to always make sure they're nothing. You know why? Because they knew who they were taking. They knew who they were enslaving. So always put it in their head that they're nothing but slaves because they know who we really were. Why do you think even with the Latinos, they get the, uh, the to keep their their be Christians and Catholics and keep their heritage and culture? Everybody except for us, the Judites. The kingdom of Judah. To go to that. So then they're looking at the Apocrypha and the Bible. Yes. Do you, do you think that they look at the Apocrypha more than they're looking at the Bible? Um, I, I don't think so. How hard is it to just ask me? How hard is it just to get me on there? Because <laughs> you know, if an Israelite get on there, they're going to crease you guys. A leader in the community. I'm, 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 I am very confident in the fact that they're not interviewing us. They're always interviewing a Christian that might have looked into us. They're not interviewing us and the leader in the uh, communities and the leaders in the community because they know we will get on there. And even if it's not contentious, you will have nothing for our questions and we'll be able to answer all your questions. I'm convinced. Right. The Apocrypha is the Bible. Go ahead, Hassan. I just, again, and for Christians that are watching this, I'm like, this is a plea at this point. If we are not the Israelites, please show me what nation. And don't say, well, you guys are Hamites. Okay, what son from Ham? Yeah, are I was going to say that. Are we, are we Kush? Huh? Are we Misraim? Are we, are we what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or are we Canaan? I think he talks about it, though. Look what he says. It says black people losing their identity. New uh, show. I'm begging Christians, please show us who black people are in the Bible. Please. Oh, look at the port. Look at the part. Okay. Edomite, anger. <laughs> and, and when I say and when I say black people, I'm talking about West Africans in uh, in specificity. To be specific, rather, the victims of the transatlantic slave trade. What son or sons of Ham? Unless you're going to say we're another son of Japheth or Shem. Where do we come from? Please let us know. 
and don't say it doesn't matter because you're going to lose more members of your church, you big dummy. Because <laughs> that's the reason why a lot of people don't respect Christianity is because we want to know. And you just say, what does it matter? You How don't have the answer. It doesn't matter. It I matters. say it all the time. All the time. I said, you got more luck getting answers out of a damn cook at Panda Express than a Christian pastor in any of these black churches. But they it's they consider it scripture so to them it is it is the bible they're they're from my understanding they're rooted heavily in old testament text a lot of them yeah yeah and oh. it is it, it's completely ripped out of context <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry we're rooted deeply in the old testament do you know if i took this marker do i have a black marker if I had a black marker and I highlighted every Old Testament scripture in the New Testament, there would not even be a New Testament, dummy. If I if I took a black marker and highlighted every single quotation from the Old Testament, literally, you can anybody can try this. There wouldn't even be a New Testament at all. So, yeah, the Lord was heavily rooted in the Old Testament scripture. The apostles we're heavily rooted in Old Testament scripture. Why, why aren't you condemning them for that? That's all they were quoting. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Here, here's how weak his argument. I want everybody to pay attention to this. Here's how weak this guy's argument is. And here's how sorry his religion is. He thinks, he genuinely thinks so much to put it on the internet that it's a point to criticize people for reading 75% of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> he thought that was a point when paul said study to show yourself approved there wasn't the new testament so what was paul telling people to study when mm. christ said search the scriptures for in them you think you have life what scriptures was he telling people to search mm. huh what are you guys talking about man these guys are heavily in the old testament yeah so so were all the apostles so were all the first century believers there was no new testament Jesus is the Old Testament made flesh. So we're, these guys are heavy into Jesus. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> right. Ain't he the word? This is Matthew 4 and 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So, yeah. You shall not live by bread alone, but by this. Every word that proceeded. And what word? What words was he talking about here, Hassad? He's quoting Jeremiah chapter 18. So these are falling right back to the Torah. That's the Old Testament. These it's like it's such an insane religion because it's unlike anything else in the earth, where they completely disregard, even if they tell you they're not going to disregard it. The major the overwhelming vast majority of the book that they say they believe in is the Old Testament, approximately 75% of it. And they're trying to say, oh, well, these are, that's the Old Testament. That's the majority of the book. And the guy that you believe in or that you say you believe in, named your religion after, he is literally the incarnation of that book. Christ is the word of God made flesh, to reiterate the point that I made earlier. Um, so I'm really interested to see what he says after this. Because, again, y'all, he thinks it's a, it's a valid critique that we spend most of our time in the Old Testament. To lock you. Let's keep going. Saying that, yeah, oh. it is it's it's completely ripped out of context. <laughs> anything that has anything to do with the biblical narrative of scripture, it is just onesie to the scriptures taken out of context. Like no whole text, no chapters, just a couple of verses here and there, and they make a whole theology out of, like you say, Deuteronomy, you know, twenty eight or whatever it is, like. Then he, you, he, he just said it's never a chapter, but then he quotes a chapter. Deacon, you heard him say that? He said we never, we, all we do is, t is isolate verses. They never deal with chapters. Yeah, they deal with Deuteronomy chapter 28. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> There's just a couple of verses here taken out of context. Like no whole text, no chapters, just a couple of verses here and there. And they make a whole theology out of, like you say, Deuteronomy you know, 28 or whatever it is like it, it is so incoherent and just thrown together 
if you ever talk to one, they will just randomly throw out random individual onesie twosie scriptures that don't mean anything other than from their crazy wacky trying to make it a fit the black people in the transatlantic slave trade. The black people. He sounds like he hates blacks. Damn. Did you see like golly. Yeah, he's he's the right. he said that, Laurel, I mean he's he's talking out of his rear end, but he's like this we're just dumb, basically, according to his perspective. We're just dumb. I mean you, you pause that at the perfect moment. <laughs> Look at this nigga slide. Like, like, like. <laughs> no, nah, I mean you guys have seen my many discussions. You guys have seen our many debates. Many PhD scholars. I mean, no matter what side you choose, you can't say that it was just wacky, tacky, and not put together. Come on now. Even Vocab said, uh, Vocab was supposed to side with his fellow Christian, James White, I'm sorry, um, Dr. Michael Brown, but he still said from a presentation level, it was neck to neck, meaning how they spoke, how they articulated their words, their order, even their slides. So come on, bro. Like, stop trying to act like we just are putting throwing spaghetti noodles on the wall, trying to see if it stick. Like we just we don't have no hard evidence. Stop. You see, we can't even buy a debate now at this point. And it ain't because of the insults and oh, you guys are mad and angry. No, because Dr. Brown would even run it back. A lot of these PhDs, a lot of these Christian apologists will run it back. Vocab wanted, vocab said he wanted to run it with me until I presented, uh, is God a racist and will there be slavery in the kingdom? They don't want to run that. On the street, yeah. Yeah, I mean. Yes. <laughs> so then how do they get to salvation? Because like you said, it's very law heavy mm -hmm. and in the law and in the Old Testament, it was sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So I hope nobody out here would like out here catching pigeons and them little brown birds. You know what uh, I mean? You, 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 you the Levite? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, they, I, I actually, they believe that now they like Hebrews because Hebrews talks about how like sacrificial laws and all those ceremonies are done away with. So they have Wait, what? Lewis talks about how like sacrificial laws and all those ceremonies are done away with. So they affirm that to kind of get a, get away, get a. They affirm. Sakari does not believe that the sacrificial laws are done away with. Neither should any Israelite believe that, because the Messiah said not one jot or one tilt. I don't care how you understand Hebrews or rather how you misunderstand Hebrews. The Messiah, who you guys believe is God, said, verse 18, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled and all is not fulfilled. We even see... <clears throat> Sacrifice, and you can get that in the law aside why we don't sacrifice. Yeah, I had but, a point. On this too. Yeah, that's fine. We even see the apostles, James, the Lord's brother, and Paul doing animal sacrifice. Well, James wasn't, but Paul was ordered by James to do so in Acts 21. In verse 26, then Paul took the men and the next day purifying himself with them entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. Here's another one in Acts 24 and 16, no, not 16, 17. Now, after many years, I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings. Look at what Paul is saying here. First, he says he in 14, he believes all the things written in the law of the prophets. Then in 16, it says, and here do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void to offense toward God and toward men. Now, after many years, I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings. He was coming back to Jerusalem after certain periods of time 
after going on his missionary uh, voyages, coming back, giving alms and giving animal sacrifice at the temple. These are things you can't get around. And the reason we're not doing it is because of it's we're not we're commanded to not sacrifice unless it's at the temple in Jerusalem. Yeah. It's very simple. So in not sacrificing, you're actually keeping the law because there's no temple in Jerusalem to do so. Go ahead, Asad. Yeah, and I'm going to just read that, and then I got a point. So this is Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 13, because the question then might get asked, well, why don't you guys sacrifice? Like Deacon explained, we don't have a temple. Otherwise, we would, which is why after Christ's death, reiterating Deacon's point in Acts chapter 21, the disciples are still giving animal sacrifices and commanding Paul to, to uh, give animal sacrifices. That's a cut. But here's the answer. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 13. Take heed to thyself that you offer not your burnt offerings in every place that you see, but in the place which the Lord shall choose in one of your tribes. There you shall offer thy burnt offerings, and there you shall do all that I command thee. So we can't just, we're actually keeping the law of sacrifice by not giving a sacrifice right now. Okay? Because the Bible says we can't just give sacrifices wherever we want. Has to so be there's a link in, Salaki, there's a link in the chat for Montez since Montez says, Somebody is scared of him or running from him. We don't know you, and I'm sure this is going to be a waste of time. But I, I, I'm hoping that you're not a bug out and that you're somebody who we can whoop whoop on real quick. Go ahead, brother. So no, I want this is then I watch this. I just found this the other day, right? Um, just rereading, and um, though a Christian might say based on what you just said that you cut yourself because in Matthew five. Yeah, Jesus came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. It's been fulfilled. And then they might, they'll pose a question. If you pay rent this month, do you have to? It's fulfilled. Do you have to pay that month's rent again? Well, watch this, everybody. Luke chapter 22, and we'll start at verse 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until when? Until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. So fulfilled doesn't mean you do it once and then it's completely disannulled and it's over with, never to be repeated again. Because Christ, he kept the Passover and then told the disciples, I will not eat this Passover again until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And what is the Passover? This is Deuteronomy chapter 16 and we'll start at verse 5. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, meaning not anywhere you want, but at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in, there thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at even. So part of the Passover is sacrificing the, the lamb. And Christ said that he will keep the Passover in the kingdom of God. And that is associated with a sacrifice. That's why you read in Ezekiel 45 and 21. That the, the, there's this there's the uh, Passover in the kingdom. So all praise the most time. I'm about to block this guy. I hate when niggas say, "Where's the link?" You was just sitting here chatting in the link, going back and forth. You were just sitting here putting comments in the chat, and now you uh, mm -hmm. now the nigga can't see the chat. I mean the link. Waste of time. You're getting blocked, bro. You in here just to cause distraction. Bye. Anyway, uh, let's continue. All right. Um, all right. We're almost to the black Jesus part. I know why you guys are here. We're almost to the black Jesus part. Oh, they affirm that to kind of get, get away, get a they affirm Hebrews to try to get away from the sacrificial laws and all of that kind of stuff. But really, they don't have an assurance of salvation from what I understand. It's kind of like most of these other cults. They are heavy on legalism <laughs> and working to try to. It's crazy. You know, it's so hard not to want to slap the dog shit out of a Christian. I'm going to explain why. Because they think that they're about to just get into the kingdom of heaven by just saying, oh, Jesus rose from the dead. Hitler believed that. Yeah, he did. Come on now. And so, and, and, and then all these scriptures that say 
he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Let me get that real quick because they act like as soon as they believe this white faggot. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, you didn't know. He said, grab it. Grab, grab it. it. Grab it. Right? Uh, rose from the dead. <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully, YouTube doesn't get mad at me for that. But, uh, <laughs> I'm in danger of the hellfire. Uh, this white homosexual, right, rose from the dead, then they believe that gives them salvation. Uh, but the Bible tells you that you won't know that you're saved until judgment day or until the end. He that endureth until the end. What is that? 15? 22. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. You're, um, those... Um... Those who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Yeah, it's uh 24. Yeah, and then I wanted to get one more revelation. I'm sorry, uh, Matthew 24 and 13. But he that shall endure until the end, not when you say, Oh, this white Jesus rose from the dead, that's not when you get saved. You get saved if you endure until the end, the same shall be saved. One more, right? Revelation 2. In Revelation 2, like that witch from yesterday said, oh, I got saved two, two years ago. So you're in heaven now. Now look at Revelation 2 and 26. Yeah, I said maggot, maggot. That's what I said, maggot. Uh, anybody who wears a maggot hat is a maggot. And he that overcometh. So you have to overcome and keep my works unto the end. This isn't just when you believe uh, the white man rose from the dead and went back to his white father 2,000 years ago, right? This is saying you have to keep some works, overcome until the end to get salvation, right? I got precepts. Go ahead, brother. So watch this because she mentioned the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. It says, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast into the end. Mm -hmm. Now, most people think Paul wrote Hebrews. So let's say that this is Paul. Paul is saying we are made partakers of Christ. Let's read it in the NLT or another version. It says, for if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. So he's saying if we do this, meaning it's something that's possible that you don't. It's possible that people come into the truth. And I think the same book of Hebrews says or um, somewhere else, if they shall fall away to renew themselves again unto repentance. So people can come in and then they can fall out. Another one, more Paul. First Corinthians 15 and we'll start at verse one. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand by which also you are saved if you keep in memory what i preached unto you what does that mean you keep it in memory you're steadfast you don't you you endure unto the end like the messiah says this is revelation chapter 12 and we'll start at verse 9 it says let's over seven and there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels Did this happen yet there was this great war in heaven and michael and his and the angels fought it says, and prevailed not, neither was their face, uh, their face, their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. When the hell did that happen? Which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Did this happen yet? No. Then look what it says. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. Mm -hmm. So salvation takes place when the kingdom of God is manifested on the king on, on the planet Earth that's and not good. a moment sooner. So what do we do with that one? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> somebody said they're picking and choosing and we're picking and choosing. They don't get there. Somebody said, Deacon, to be fair, they get their theology from the Bible. That's not true. Where in the Bible does it say Jesus was born in a dead cold winter, of de December 25th? Where is in the Bible does it say you can celebrate a wicked satanic Halloween in, in, in your church? When in the Bible does it say you could do whatever, all manner of wickedness and still get the kingdom of heaven? 
Where in the Bible does it say all the angels were white? God is white. The son of the son of God is white. Their theology ain't based on the Bible. What are you talking about? <clears throat> Let's go. In your salvation, but at the end of the day, there is no. They most of the and, time, and we know how to get salvation. Matthew chapter nineteen. Jesus Christ said it himself. If you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. It's very simple. Very simple. With the prerequisite of being an Israelite. I'll tell you, yeah, you're definitely going to make it. It's more like, oh, I'll, I'll figure it out when I get there. Or, you know, if I'm black and I believe that I'm a Hebrew Israelite, that almost has become the new gospel. That's the type of comment that I get in my videos. You're going to burn that, you know, God's going to get you because you're not affirming your true lineage. So, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then if nobody is truly secure unless you're black and you affirm your lineage, my No, she just told you that we include Latinos and Native Americans. Unless you're black and you affirm your lineage, my lineage is through Haiti. I am of the Levitical priesthood. So just as long as we clear on that, y'all. Um what do they think about Jesus? Like, is there a need for Jesus? Can I ask a question, Deacon? Okay, so they have an assurance that they are saved, right? They're saved, Deacon, aren't they? Yeah, that's what they said. They what, if they become, what if they all say, you know what? We're wrong. We're black Hebrew Israelites now. We're going to keep the law and wear fringes and observe the Sabbath. They're, they're not still saved no more. Huh? Well, they're, they're, so, they, so are they saved or are they not saved? They're saved for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh. Because, like I said, there's so many different types of Hebrew Israelites. So you have like your more militant ones that come from um, the One West tradition. So One West. That's right. The name of the school that pretty much birthed. My hey, don't talk about the school, sister. You watch your mouth when you talk about the school. Well, you're not going to go there. Anymore. In Hebrew Israelism, it was in New York. Um, so those are the ones that you'll typically see on the street corners yelling at people. Some of them have some very interesting. They always say yelling at people. Like, <laughs> why is there this narrative being painted that every Israelite on the streets is yelling at people? Let's say I am yelling at you. Hey, uh, come follow God. Hey, make sure you pray today. So what do you mean by yelling at people? So how do you feel about the Christians that go out there and yell their 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 rhetoric in Christianity? It's the type of vilifying and demonizing I'll be talking about. When Nehemiah said, oh, do, when he told people to stop breaking the Sabbath or else I will put hands on thee. Direct mm. quote. Mm-hmm. And by quote, outfit. So if you see them, you'll know, okay, yeah, that's a Hebrew Israelite group. But then you also have some who are kind of blending Hebrew Israelism with what? That's a good point. Somebody said preachers yell in church. I mean, all the hooping and hollering and yelling in church, and now you got a problem with us yelling to, uh, to repent on the street corner. <laughs> Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't make me go to a video of Christian pastors yelling in church. Come on now. I remember I heard Eric Mason go, you lose it! <laughs> you lose it! What about David Lynn? Cut! Cut! Get this! Break it! Break it! Bop it! David oh. Lynn was trying to cast out a demon Break it, pop it, pull it. Could be maybe a, a version Cut. of Christianity. Like, I guess it's possible that some who believe that they are Israelites still are Christians because they believe that they're saved by grace and faith through Christ alone. Um, but it just depends. Like, so the more. And I never understood how they said saved by grace through faith through Christ. That's three things now. Tent ones, from what I can tell, Jesus is the messiah but he's not god he's almost like a demigod he's the messiah but he's not god the father so of course they, Wait, they also reject the trinity which wait 
But you just said he's not God the Father. You just said we don't believe he's not God the Father. You're teaching one is then you turn around and say the Trinity. You don't even know what you're talking about. Bye, where are you going? That's not till five o'clock. Four thirty. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shout all up. God the Father. So of course they they also reject the Trinity, which definitely mm -hmm. God all up. Um, so Jesus really is kind of like a means to an end. Like, yeah, he's gonna come back. And he's gonna destroy all these people. But then your more modern type of Hebrew Israelites will say, well, anybody can be saved, whether you're white or not. But it's almost like, but you still have to affirm that, that I'm an Israelite. And if you don't affirm that I'm an Israelite, then you're you're done. You're done. But, but it says know, Jesus so is going to come back and destroy all these people. Are... Huh? It, but it's it literally said like it's, it's so I got to find a new. Uh, uh, it's amazing. It's, it's truly amazing how the Bible can literally say the opposite of what they believe in it literally says like literally you guys it says that jesus is going to come back and destroy all these people like literally watch this blue letter bible.com and numbers 24 numbers 24 and 17. Where are you going? i shall see him but not now i shall behold him but not nigh there shall come a star out of jacob and a scepter shall rise out of israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. When you read it in the NLT, this is what the Lord and Savior is going to do. A star will rise from Jacob. A scepter will emerge from Israel. It will crush the foreheads of Moab's people, cracking the skulls of all the people of Sheth. Who the hell is Sheth? He's the next son that was had by Adam and Eve after uh, Cain killed Abel. We all come from Seth. So what does it mean when the Bible says that he's going to destroy all the children of Sheth? All, but all humanity is going to get their asses destroyed in a large number, a large mass of them. When oh. The, oh, no Diddy, I guess. But uh, when the Messiah returns, so like, <laughs> asses destroyed is wild. Uh, okay, so let's continue. But no, no, they might want to see it in the New Testament, though, Hassan. That the Lord is going to destroy the, the 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 nations when He comes back. So let's give it let's get the New Testament, Revelation nineteen, Revelation nineteen, and so verse eleven. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. This is the Messiah. Flame of fire. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. What was he doing? Destroying the nations. The armies of heaven followed him. Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with he should smite the nations. Why don't you Christians read this? And he's going to stomp on them like the wine press? Why don't you guys read this? Yeah. I, I got another one. Go ahead. Matthew 12 and 17, it says uh, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet, saying, behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. Who Jews is kind of like the gospel. That, wow. so, so knowledge that black people are the true Jews is kind of like the gospel that leads to salvation. Yes. <laughs> Do you have to have. I, I like that, though. Are we opposed to what he's saying there? Well, the good news, when does it say the good tidings is to Zion? Well, how does Zion get the good news if Zion doesn't know who Zion is? That is Isaiah 61. It's that Jesus is black because I'm sure they probably uh Oh, have here we go. Yes. Do you have to have the knowledge that Jesus is black? Because I'm sure they probably have to run to you. My favorite verse when I was in critical race theory and social justice <laughs> is from Revelation. Like, you see his bronze feet? You see that woolly hair? This mess is woolly. Okay? I'm related to Jesus, and of course, Jesus is black. Yeah, it's the good times theology for me. I hate it so much. Now, I haven't heard them. Damn. What a word. Wow. Dude. What a she word. She hates it. She hates it. That to Africa and all of that. And so now, because of the tracing of the dark skin and tracing them into Africa, they must be meant to be slaves. 
Yeah. That was that. That's just the destiny of the people with dark skin because of this curse. Yeah. What? The right. So what I think. What, is it, what does it say that in the Bible? And it's not on all Hamites. Cush didn't get cursed. Misraim didn't get cursed. Foot didn't get cursed. Yeah, it came on Canaan. One thing about the curse of Ham that's important to, to point out in terms of this conversation is, is how they view black people as being the descendants of Ham, right? And I mean, I want to, I want to, I want to. So, Deacon, if we're not descendants of Ham, then who are we descendants of? No, he's saying that we view black people as the descendants of Ham. But how are you guys saying these guys are so confused and misrepresenting us? They're confusing themselves. How in the, the world are we saying we are the Israelites, but we're also saying we're Hamites? This is what they're saying that we're saying, which is really infuriating. We are saying we are not Ham. The world is saying we are Ham. We're saying we are Shem, Israelites. Because we're the descendants of Ham, we've been cursed. And that is why black people are not in the position they should be in, right? Or that's why black people are in a lesser position within the world. When you think about the world, look, think about where Africa is compared to the rest of the world. And so the reason that is in their mind is because of this curse of Ham. And the way out of that curse is to truly understand who you really are. What? And that is to be what? a Hebrew Israel. You are. What? What? That's the, I got, that is the most outrageous thing I've ever heard a Christian say concerning us. That's number one, Deacon. He took it. He took it. Hey, hey Deacon. He took it further. <laughs> so we're saying that we are Hamites under a Hamitic curse. And the only way out of it is to become a Hebrew Israelite. <laughs> oh, my God. Lord, take this guy's head off his shoulders. Or repent. Oh, man. I chose the people. And until we realize who we are, we'll never ascend to the heights of where we're supposed to be, which is kings and, and rulers and all of this type of stuff. And so, and all this crazy stuff that we're going to rule something. That is where the curse of Ham kind of really fits into like their theology of it gives them an explanation of why the world is the way it is. Unshaken twenty, bro. Like and she's not correcting them. That what's her name? Ty, uh, Titus. Titus ain't correct either. She's just sitting there nodding her head. <laughs> this is just slander, and Titus knows this is not true. This is slander. Vocab. I know you're watching. Come on, bro. You gonna let Titus do this? But they like, get too real here, man. Uh, <sighs> okay, so they talk about Edomites. So I have a question about the whole Edomite situation. Because <laughs> you said that the white people were Edomites. Yeah. Can one of you explain? Because I'm only in cultural apologetics number one. Okay. I haven't got like all these degrees in, from seminary yet. Who were the Edomites and why is that important that white people are Edomites? If my memory serves me correctly, it's because of Jacob and Esau. So Esau is the like patriarch of the Edomite. And I think the Bible says something about Esau's skin being red or ruddy or something yep. like that. So yep. they think that white people descended directly from Esau and that's why their skin is fair. Wow, so because white people can- Their skin is fair? What are you, their skin is beautiful? Is that what you're saying? The hell are you talking about? Blush. They are Edomite, basically. Oh, and well, something about to the Caucasus Mountains, like Obadiah talking about them hiding in the rock, and they're like white people was hiding in the Caucasus Mountains, and so there you go, Edomite. That that is the extent of their theology. That is... I can't stand. We, we have no. What, what he's saying, we have no extra biblical sources. We have no books. We have no prophecies. We have no archaeology. That's what that's what they're saying. They're trying to make it. They're trying to paint the world out. As if we're just some group of dumb, uneducated individuals. Yeah, which I like. I like that. Come, come, because you know what's going to do, Dick? It's going to empower a random Christian. Like, oh, these guys are easy. Yeah, come yeah. on. Yeah, we're stupid. Yeah, right, Drink! Right. <laughs> with, with with the Bible. You know what I mean? But golly, and it's uh, I'm gonna say this, and I gotta head to work. But it it really bugs me. There's a scripture in Sirach when uh, it says that um, people who are 
intelligent, when they're not respected, it makes them angry. And the same is true on the opposite side of the spectrum. Someone who thinks, and I don't mean to be rude when I say this, I really hate when dumb people think they're smart. I, and that's not me thinking that I'm the smartest guy in the world. But the brother on the right is far from the sharpest tool in the shed. And then for him to sit here and that's the extent of their theology. I don't know how much this brother knows about the Bible. It's very minuscule. But um, yeah, make sure y'all like the video. I don't know how many views we got, viewers we got right now, but we need to be. Let me check. Let me see if we're at an adequate number. It takes two seconds. It's free 99. We got 900 people in here. We need to be at 500 likes. Let's get 100 more likes in here, y'all. Come on, man. But I'm about to head to uh, to the Plantation King. I'm going to holler at you, Deacon. Show on. Show on. It's really that simple. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, Krista is over here. She is behind the scenes of all things. And she brought up a really good point that in order to be considered a Jew, because Jews technically did not exist during Noah's day, they were not considered the Jews, nor I don't think were they considered Hebrews, the Hebrew people at this time. In order to be considered like a Semite, you actually needed to come through the line of the other son, who I believe it's Shem. Yeah. And so, so how do they connect and make us or them, not me, but them or black people Jews? So basically what she's saying is, is that uh, we're Hamites. That's what this hoe is saying. Excuse my language. I'm so angry at these silly Christians. Please forgive me, guys. But when I say hoe, I know I don't mean like sexually, but she's she's a spiritual fornicator with and she's uh, committing spiritual fornication with every false doctrine you can think of. OK, please. So. They're saying that we're Hamites, guys. So what son of Ham are we? Are we the Canaanites? The ones who, what son of Ham are we? That's what they're saying. And can you prove that we are the son of Ham? What's going on, Lando? I see you up in here, man. When you ready to repent, brother, and keep these law, statutes, and commandments. Yeah, spiritual 304. That's right. A spiritual 304. That's what I meant. When I said ho or whore, she's a spiritual 304. But that's just so disheartening and discouraging for our people. Hey, guys, you guys are Hamites. The one God said he didn't like and cursed. That's so disheartening and discouraging. Thanks for the help and support with uplifting your people and community. Well, Jesus Christ called that Hamite woman a dog. And the Bible says that Hamites, particularly the Canaanites, won't even be able to enter into the temple in the kingdom of heaven in the house of God. All Egyptians are Hamites. And God talks about how he's going to destroy them at the arrival of the Messiah and subjugate them. So all these prophetic judgments that are coming on the Hamites, guess what? Our people should get ready for them. Because we're nothing but Hamites. And they can't even prove we're Ham. That's crazy. That's a good question. I think that one might be above my pay grade. <laughs> That's okay. As, as, as I often say, don't try to make it make sense. It is not very biblical at all. It is, like I can say, they just take hodgepodge scriptures and throw at you and try to make some theology out of it. And it is really, really bad. Um, I was going to talk, I wanted to talk about it because I don't know, um, Ty, if you're familiar with it, but I used to be in a um, Christian Black Hebrew Lights group. Like it was a combined group where you would go back and forth and discuss theology mm -hmm. and this type of stuff. Their theology is rooted in memes. Like oh. they can never do like a biblical exposition. It was always a meme that they would make their argument off of. Have you experienced that? Have you seen a lot of the memes they like to throw around? Yeah, it, and they're pretty bad. They are horrible, but that's their, the that's their apologetic. Yeah, and of course YouTube and uh, yes. they they don't really have a good hermeneutic. It's just if I like this text, I'll take that. And if if something is in there that I don't like, then I must re make it say something else. So it's almost like a, a bit of esoteric type of interpretation. Like I've got this higher understanding of the scriptures. They'll tell me this all the time. You didn't come to this conclusion because the spirit hasn't revealed it to you yet. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know who has worse memes, Black Hebrew Israelite or LeBron James fans. I don't know who has the worst. <laughs> well, I can't speak on that one. 
Don't ever equate us to LeBron James fans. That's disrespectful. That man ain't the GOAT. All right? Let's just make that clear. His ass is out. Wow. So, uh, the water to uh, Ken P for the super chat donation. Greatly appreciate you. Ask another question then. Because, see, now my brain is just really, really going. Um, what do you think the impact is of the Black Hebrew Israelites on the Black community, like, just overall? I mean, we could talk about the impact in the Black church or in Black higher education, but where do you, where do you see, like, this their impact in the black community and what is the the implications i guess of that overall i would say it's really bad i mean especially for the black church i mean they're basically teaching people how to misinterpret the entire bible so it messes up everything and because they are torah keepers or you know old old testament commandment keepers that type of theology then you're basically dismissing the entire gospel you are trading that for a works-based gospel so it's horrible for christians it's horrible for Christians because they don't have to have works to be saved. Even though the New Testament does not say that. This is why I say their theology is not based on the Bible. And notice how Jewish people are Torah keepers, but they'll never come on here and laugh at those white Jews and talk shit about them. This is why I don't really be caring when the Most High judges our people and kills them or do something to their family because they're so evil and wicked they need to be purged from this world by god i don't be caring because they're self-haters and they're just taking up space and oxygen at this point lord go ahead and judge your people get they ass out the way and i mean it um and as far as the black community i don't see any positives that really come along with it at least not there's no positivity from us having Israelites to, to stop them from raping you or mugging you at night or really just killing you in a random act of violence or trying to sell dope to you. There's no benefit to that because that's what we're doing. Anything that outweighs the, the bad. I mean, so you so you got black men coming together and they're doing something that on the outside, I guess, doesn't look horrible, except when they're yelling at people. And that's quite often, you know, so to me, it just kind of breeds anger. So the fact that we're taking Crips, Bloods, GDs, Disciples, Pimps, all brothers and sisters, strippers, prostitutes, doing all manner of wickedness, and they're now repenting and keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments, and 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 focusing on the family and community, us yelling out people outweighs that. Do you do you hear that? Us yelling at white people outweighs that. Friend. <laughs> Um, just ungodliness. I, I don't think it's good at all. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask you, but I'm glad you said the word anger, because that is what I think about when I think of black Hebrew Israelites on the corner, yelling at people, profanity, just anger. Why is there so much anger in it? You God said he's angry every day. So why don't you ask him? Why is he angry every day? Huh? This is Psalm 7 and 11. God judges the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. So why don't you ask God why he's full of so much anger and wrath? You Christians don't know the Bible. So let's skip to law keeping. We're going to talk about how we should never teach people to keep God's laws. It's very, it's very angry. It is a very angry and I say, I mean, you're trying to keep the law. I mean, yeah. that's what you're going to yoke around your neck and and there's no joy in that. There's no salvation. There's no hope. It is simple. There's no there's no joy in keeping the law. I'm going to tell you guys, they're saying everything that is that exactly the opposite of the Bible. There's no joy in keeping the law. That's what he just said. Right. There's no joy in it. Romans chapter seven, New Testament. Right. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Delight is synonymous with joy. I delight in it. Oh, that's a yoke. 
Oh, it's a yoke. It's a yoke of bondage. Oh, really? Is that what the Bible says? First John five and three. For if this for this is the love of God that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. What yoke are you talking about? But you know what we're gonna. We, but then they'll turn around and say we can't even keep every law. This is what Christians say: God sent Jesus to do away with the law to give us some New Testament laws that we can't even keep. All those we're still sinners. Christians are a bunch of if, the men. The men. I'm gonna blame this on the men in Christianity of our community. A bunch of lawless, homosexual, effeminate custers. <laughs> A bunch of lawless, homosexual, effeminate custers, right? Because, yeah, we couldn't keep that law. That's why Jesus had to come. And he gave us some new commandments. And guess what? We can't keep those either. That's Christianity. That's what they teach. We trying to fulfill the law. And there's no joy in that. There's no salvation. There's no hope. It is simply trying to fulfill the law in your own works and your own strength. And that is a terrible place to be. Yeah. Yeah. So one question, Ty, when you were, when your friend was trying to convert you, what stopped you from being converted? What stopped you from going down that road? Uh, mostly just having a handle on the true gospel at the end of the day and knowing the scriptures and, you know, knowing what the Bible says about God's love and how we supposed, how we're supposed to treat our, our enemies, our neighbors. I'm just like, knowing what the Bible said about a God's love. So, is he still love you when you're burning in hell for eternity? That's what you guys, you guys think you burn in hell for eternity. Does he still love you? Did he love the whole world and when he killed him and only left eight people? He's just all love because he hates, he's angry with the wicked. He hates Esau. He hates all workers of iniquity. That's Bible. He's coming back with wrath verbatim, indignation verbatim. It says that. None of this really makes sense. Um, and I just like, we're not supposed to keep the law. That's the, the New Testament is not about us doing exactly what they did in the Old Testament. That kind of defeats the whole purpose of salvation. And we're not supposed to keep the law. In the law is don't be homosexual, don't be lesbian, don't, don't uh go into your mother's daughter. I'm sorry, yeah, your mother, don't commit incest, don't even have sex with your wife's daughter. That's law, don't steal, that's law. Don't lie. That's law. Don't commit idolatry. That's law. How to deal with sexual laws and menstrual cycles. That's law. Not to eat food, sacrifice to idols. That's law. I mean, literally what she's saying is you're not supposed to keep the laws. So if 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 I only have if if I only have the Old Testament and she says, don't keep God's laws, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say I don't have to do any of those laws that he's telling me not to do. This is the stupidity of Christianity. And I think we've reached our time. This is just ridiculous. Uh, and I'm done, quite frankly. You know, but somebody's got to do it and show you how stupid and ignorant and slanderous and lawless Christianity is and how it's a white supremacist cult and how our people need to fastly remove their, ourselves and be unplugged from that system, that organization, that business, that plantation. Right. And, you know, God, the most high has me here. To be the one to do it, even though it's a tedious task and it's very draining and stressful. And uh, but I got to push through it to get to it. So I hope you guys um, were edified. Nevertheless, uh, I hope that you guys learned what not to be and how not to be. And just learn and just pat yourself on the back and rejoice that God has called you out of the darkness of Christianity into his marvelous light and how uh, it makes literally negative 1000% sense. Um, so with that, y'all, we'll see you Friday, Lord's will. To all my Sakari Varsity Online Academy specializing in Hebrew apologetics, all my students in the, in the university, we'll see y'all tomorrow. And let's end this by giving all praises honor and glory to Yahweh. We do so by Shema Vashiach Yahweh Shai. Till next time, y'all, peace, love, and shalom.